How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome back to the Seattle Kraken Franchise Mode episode number 27 moving into the 2027 off season. In the last one we solidified back to back to back Stanley Cup championships. The three-peat was completed as we took down the Toronto Maple Leafs for the second time in three Stanley Cups now in five games on our road there. It was pretty smooth sailing. What a team we were especially after our trades last Last season in the second half, bringing in Jacob Chikrin for the defense, taking down the Ducks in five, the Oilers in five, the Avalanche in five, and finally the Leafs in five. We had our ups and downs, there were some tight games, a lot of games decided by one goal, but we came out of every series in five games. The 11 million dollar man Nathan McKinnon, who has two more years on his contract now at the age of 31, won the Conn Smythe in back-to-back -back years with 28 points in 20 games. A lot of a lot of the supporting cast coming together, especially Especially Jacob Chikrin, who gets 20 30 points a season, puts up 21 points in 20 games to capture his first Stanley Cup. The final season for longtime Seattle Kraken, Jaden Schwartz, who's been here for all six seasons with the team. Vinny Trocek, who's been here for a long time as well. So, moving into this offseason, we're starting to see a changing of the guard as the prospects who are kind of buried in the bottom six to, for the duration of Schwartz and, uh, and Trocek's contract are finally going to get their chances to breathe now as they will move on. They're getting older. They want to get paid. We don't have the money. we got to give our extension dollars to Isaiah Marco, who's coming off of his ELC. He'll now get 11.875. We're going to start off this episode by sending a contract to Peyton Wilm before I get into the comments or get into anything else because he is 88 overall, 23 years of age, and on at the end of his uh, entry-level contract now. We're going to go ahead and offer him a contract. He was our 19th overall selection in 2022. Peyton Wilm is our goaltender of the future. He's had injury trouble the last couple seasons, and over his NHL career, nothing crazy. Great winning record. Crazy numbers, not so much. 9-12 save percentage, very respectable, and 2.55 goals against average. But at his best, when he is fully healthy and when he is on his game, look at those playoff stats. He has 33-7-3 and in 43 games with a 9-22 save percentage and 2.37 goals against average. So put that, you know, lump in the regular season and the playoff numbers together, and I'm ready to offer him a good contract before it starts to cost us 11, 12, 13 million. He currently wants a 10.525 for eight years. 85% of that is just under 9 million at 8.94. So 8.950 for eight years. I think this is a very fair contract for Peyton Wilm. It still leaves us with about what, 5.7 million or so, 5.69. If I'm right, then I'm a wizard. I'm not, that's just off the top of my head. They do call me data for a reason. So I'm gonna go ahead and offer Peyton Wilm that contract right off the bat. We'll see if he's saying, oh, I'm not really interested, but I'll, okay, sounds good. We'll see what happens there. Worst case, we just qualify him moving into the uh, off season and we'll figure it out later on. But that's something we really want to take care of before we even have to think about our free agents because we need to have his money taken care of. Now moving into the NHL entry draft. There are certainly some players that we have watch listed that we want to take a look at. We do have a good amount of picks and we have fantastic prospects in our system. But we want to make sure that we stay strong, that we continue to look down the road to continue this dynasty moving forward because the three-peat, we're in dynastic territory now. We are a dynasty. Those dynastic dreams have been realized, but we want to go even for four in a row, five in a row. And I'm really impressed with this team because it's not like we're, oh, we're giving everybody X factors and we're trading all of our picks and prospects, our low elite prospects who have a lot of trade value for big players. No, this is a team we built from the ground up. We've barely touched free agency. Yes, Nathan McKinnon was a huge piece in free agency, but we made sure to have the money to give him a reason to come here and we have had fantastic success with the Kraken and we want to keep it up because I'm very proud of what we've done here. So getting to the comments from last one now, a lot of excitement for the three consecutive Stanley Cups. Aiden says, absolutely amazing playoff run. The three-peat is ours, so now can we rest and get four? That Chikrin trade was so good for us. Love the series and let's go into the offseason with a lot to look up to. Thank you very much, Aiden. Pat saying, congrats on a three-peat, my man. The Polar Bears alumni and I had a fine cookout to celebrate. Ethan Bear especially, a polar bear legend on Pat's series on his channel. I think Lume, Passe, Passe Lume, a prospect in our system, and Ashley Maloney, another one, take the spots of Schwartz and Trocek, and I think I'm really agreed on that, barring like a disaster in the offseason that they don't get any growth. If Schwartz comes back a one-year play on the fourth line, perhaps, but Trocek deserves his last big payday. 
Lume and Popov are centers with no secondary positions. I say one of them takes the third line spot because we're also considering if um, McKinnon is one and Beniers is two, Trocek was three, but now he's up to an 87 overall. He wants six million. He wants to get his last payday. We don't have that money. Who's the third line center? Lume and Popov will be fighting for that spot in the coming preseason, most likely. And I don't think we'll have to look into free agency. Vinny says that he'd put a priority to look in the organization for a person who can fit on the third line. That's what we want to do. We want to look at internal substitution as we have to give our guys the upper hand. But if there is no one available, then you know we consider looking into free agency for someone who would. Concerning what Vinny would do with his day with the cup, same as last time, spend the day with the cup by relaxing at home. Wonderful. Mr. Brian Michaelak says, all this talk of Ben Bishop getting his statue, the 40-year-old backup who got another Stanley Cup ring, truly deserved. But when is GM Data getting his? Scotty Bowman best be looking over his shoulder. What a run, my friend. This Seattle Kraken franchise has been the most fun of them all. Well-deserved three-peat. Now to continue this dynasty and cement the 2020s as the decade of the expansion. Great work, fellow. Thank you very much, Brian. That means a lot. And it goes into what I was saying earlier with how we can really be proud of this franchise mode. Apple with some more kind words. Wow, man. I know I already said you'd turn this franchise into a dynasty, but then you go and prove me right. You are quickly making yourself one of the most legendary GMs ever in NHL, but we know that already, didn't we? Well, you know what? It wouldn't be possible without the assistant GMs, so they made a little extra space on that Stanley Cup, and we engraved a lot of names on it. Finishing it off on the Discord server from Zach, who's talking about a bit about the future of this series, so I'll, I'll highlight this comment just to tell you a bit of where we were going in the direction of the Kraken franchise mode now. You know, we're closing on 30 episodes. We have three Stanley Cups. Zach says, congratulations on the three, Pete. Many win one, the elite win two and the greatest teams win three or more. The Islanders won four, the Canadians five in a row. I think we should take this franchise mode in its current format until 2030, so three more seasons. We have the opportunity to do what no team has been able to do and try winning six straight, cementing the expansion team as the greatest team of all time in its first decade. If not, we'll settle for being on par with the other greatest teams in NHL history. After that, I suggest another simulation until the end of the franchise mode, like we did in Columbus, to see how careers of players like Marco unfold. The one for Columbus was fantastic. That could take us on the calendar in the real world all the way to deep into the Stanley Cup playoffs in time for a second knee-jerk franchise mode off what happens in the real world that can be a shorter series but a small journey to take us to nhl 23 where we can build something great again technically this whole franchise mode has taken place in an alternate universe so it would be fun to throw in a realistic one at the end that is true because even though seattle's a real team this is a team that we created off of our expansion draft so it goes to show that hey maybe the kraken should have taken notes from good old data right but i do appreciate that zach and it makes a lot of sense i don't know if 2030 is a time that i'll lock in right now but some Somewhere around that time where we'll simulate to the end of the franchise mode, 2045, I believe, will be coming in the somewhat near future. We're not going to go to 60, 70 episodes here. All that being said, we're ready to hop into the draft. I already have some prospects on the watch list, so let's go ahead and get this party started. We're not looking to make big trades up. We could definitely trade the rights of some players, though. Uh, big retirements there. Oh, Alex Ovechkin leaving, if you remember from last episode. No teams want to trade their picks even for the first wild, like the entire first round until pick 23. What? So no team in the first round even wants to trade their pick at all. No one in the first round really impressed me too, too much. If we did move up to pick number 23, it would be a good prospect. But we have to keep in mind that the system is quite crowded and we're happy with who we have. We don't need to make too much more competition. Uh, it would be a medium top six um, uh, forward, which is not horrible at all. It's great for a, for a late first round pick. But I don't think it's something that we really need to trade up for when the value later on is still quite high. So I'm going to go ahead, all that being said, and simulate through the entirety of round number one. Let's go back through and highlight what we saw in the first round. First overall pick, uh, Par Sundstrom. Uh, going, yes, Par Sundstrom going to the Arizona Coyotes. 83 overall medium elite sniper at 17 years of age. Wow. Recky, medium elite, medium elite, lost 79s. 82 overall medium elite sniper going to the Blackhawks. And then after that, oh my goodness, the Canucks missed on that. Missed an 80 overall medium elite power forward and took a 64 overall medium top six. Uh, this guy, 76 overall, 78 overall, 75 overall. A lot of teams missing and others finding great quality in this first round. Then we move into a lot of the medium top sixes there. The guy we could have taken would have been just another medium top six player. 
nothing too crazy and that we don't see in later rounds and some top nines at the end yikes so now we're at 33rd overall we pick at the end of round number two so do we want to move up before we get to the 60s that's what i'll check out right now there are a few medium league goalies in here and some low elites, which are very tempting, I do have to say, especially since some of them do seem to have the X factors. Like Mikael Grossman, he definitely has X factors. Three years away, low elite, 17 years of age. 17 and three years away, that's tempting for Grossman. There's another one here, Jonah Hobson, who's a defenseman. Low elite, two years, excuse me, three years away at 18 years of age. And there's also Sylvain Burroughs, who also has the X-Factor abilities as a um, low elite prospect. He's two years away at 17 years of age, so Burroughs is even more tempting, especially with the X-Factors. And we could use forwards over defense, so don't want to exit there. The Blues take a medium top nine. So I might look into trading for Burroughs here if teams are interested in taking some rights of players and other uh, some later picks, but I'm not going to try to force anything too crazy. Burroughs would be around pick number 40, so let's see if this is 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40 with the Rangers. Let's see what happens with them. If anyone's definitely gone, it's Vinny Trocek, since we definitely cannot afford to re-sign him. Would the Rangers want to take the rights to Vinny Trocek in two fifth round picks for pick number 40? Not quite, even though they, everything there is on the block and they are willing to give up the pick. What if I make it a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth, as opposed to two fifths? What do the Rangers say to this? Uh, still too far off. I'll try adding in, I'll make it a fourth uh, and two fifths instead of the fourth, fifth, and a sixth. Just keep trying some different permutations. Too far off. Two fourths and a fifth, perhaps, with Vinny Trocek. Still too far off. Might not be able to get this one done. But I'll add one more fifth. I think this will probably be my final offer. Two fourths and two fifths for basically 122, 24, 54, and 60 in exchange for 40 because Trocek is just a toss in and trade accept. So thank you very much, New York. Some of the later picks that we probably wouldn't be using very much on, slash, we'd just be trading them. That's what they're for to trade for to move up fifths for fourths and fourths for thirds. Not always gonna use every single late pick. So let's go ahead and sim to pick number 40. We keep our pick as well at the end of this round, which is what I really want to do as well as our third round pick. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and select Sylvain Burroughs from the Blainville Boisbriand Armada of the QMJHL. He is two years away, low elite, has good puck skills, has the X factor, 17 years of age. I'm happy with this selection, so let's go ahead and make it. Sylvain, bienvenue à l'équipe. And he is 71 overall, low elite. Let's go. That's why you gotta scout, ladies and gentlemen. Great prospect going here as well to the to the Jets. Ekman Larson, a 71 overall medium top 4D. Some other 70-some overall players. So Sylvain Burroughs, is he a wonky prospect? Let's say he's a two-way forward. Uh, no, he's great. He has good puck skills, and he is w very well-rounded. Defense could be worked on, but for 40th overall, shock and awe. Tape to tape, ankle breaker, third eye, puck on a string. It's tricky. Look at all those X-Factors and superstar abilities. Okay. Sylvain, wow, wow, wow. Let's keep on moving there. And by the way, Vinny Trocek. Ooh, Vinny Trocek. Thank you, my friend, for what a... Hold on. We've got to give this guy some time here. Let me take... Let me move... At our next pick. At our next pick, we'll take a quick timeout to say thank you to Vinny Trocek. Next pick is 64. And unless it's someone at like 60, I don't want to make any more trade-ups. Even those other great low elite prospects who have the X-Factors, we just can't afford trading up every single time. So unless there's someone around here, two bar medium elite, uh, don't think so. We'll probably just end up taking one of these low top six guys or low top four D, low top six forward, yeah. So we'll just go ahead and simulate up to pick number 64 now. Prospects going between now and then. Hold on, 64 for good. No, 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 no. Not gonna do that. Medium top six forward, low top six, medium top nine, low top four. Yeah, nothing crazy. They're the medium elite goalies that go. We weren't going to be taking them. Low elite, Mikhail Grossman. We were thinking about him. He's 64 overall, so lower overall, same age. And yeah, not as good. Uh, the attributes aren't as good. So I'm happy with our selection. Morrison at 72. Uh, Ray was another one at 63 overall we were thinking about. Jonathan Morrison, we were thinking about him. Two-way D. Okay. Uh, and the other guy, Hobson, was who I was going to take. Jonah Hobson. I'm okay with that. More of a project. More of a project. While well, Burroughs seems to already be looking quite solid. So let's just take a quick time out here because I want to just pay homage 
to Mr. Vinny Trocek. So Vinny Trocek, here he is. We got him in free agency. He played one year kind of as first line center slash. He was always first, second line guy. We signed him to a four year deal thinking that he'd stay here for two, maybe three seasons. He ends up staying for one, two, three, four, five years and getting those three Stanley Cup rings. He was amazing scoring 20, he was point per game in the first on the first run, 20 and 22 on the second and 13 and 24 the third. He was in the top six. He was always a 60 to 70 point guy. And in the, on the third line, he was always in the 50s, around the 50 point mark. So he was an amazing trooper for us. He is uh, a, a, a Kraken legend, basically, for being here as a, as a pillar through those three cups. He has his superstar abilities. I'm not going to take them off of him. He'll keep those for the rest of his days. And I wish him all the best with where, whoever he signs, whether it be New York or somebody else. He will always have a place in the hearts of all Kraken fans. Let's make our pick now at 64th overall at the end of round number two. Uh, low top 4D and low top 6 forwards look available here. Quinn Claxon, three years away, low top 6 from the Charlottetown Islanders. Or we can go for low top 6 gem, Caden Russell, three years away, low top 6 from the Gatsino Olympique. Low top 6 gem is what I'm leaning. Uh, if this menu could actually scroll. Yeah, I think that's going to be the obvious one for us right there with the gem, with a similar potential as well. Our scouts have him ranked at 68 and Claxon kind of also at 68, but we'll just go for Caden Russell from the Olympic Zugatsuno and we'll see what he was. We get 63 overall, low top six playmaker, not bad at all for a 64th overall pick some decent attributes that are nothing special now, but we continue to keep note of them and hopefully they will grow nicely. We'll simulate now all the way up to pick number 92, 28 of the third round. Not gonna be an exceptionally long draft after that now. The picks from now are just pretty much going with our guys, whoever's available here. Obergauer, Ola Obergauer, uh, 17 years of age from Kuku Kuvola, three years away. That's pretty good actually for 17 year old at this point in the draft. That's not bad. And the rest, yeah, I think that's a solid one right there. And you just always fun to say cuckoo. So let's go ahead and select him, Obergauer, who jumped from 111 to 98. Our scouts have him around 96. Cuckoo Quavola of Liga, six foot 17 year old pro a centerman. He is 62 overall, low top six, sniper. Is he really a centerman? 69 faceoffs? Yeah, that'll grow. Not bad. Okay. All right, we're happy with that, and we move on to pick number 137 now. And I'm a very, very lucky man because I totally forgot about how I watch listed Cole Kelly, six foot five, meaningly goaltender at 135, picking 137. He probably would have should have traded up one or two, but woo, we are lucky. Cole Kelly from the USA Central, six foot five, 19 years of age. Always nice to get a value selection for the goaltending depth. 61 overall, medium elite, already better than some of those guys in the 40s who were drafted in the second round. Very happy to have him on board. Welcome to the organization. Aside from that, look at a lot of bottom sixes, seventh Ds, not the strongest class, I do not believe. Next pick at 192, anyone between now and then? Uh, yes, at 150, we wanna go ahead and try and select Jason Williams, medium top six. So I'm gonna trade for around one, something in the late 140s. We'll try and go for pick number 148 from Dallas. Uh, we'll try, well, well, we'll dip into next year's picks. There are some more prospects we have pins, we won't be able to get all of them. So I'd prefer not to trade this year's picks. Uh, maybe I'll just swap fifths. Yeah, how about I give you a fifth next year for your fifth right now, if you don't want to make that selection. Yeah, that's fair. That's oftentimes a trade that really happens in the real league as well, in the real NHL on the draft floor. You don't like your pick now? Perfect. I'll take it from you. Here's a pick of the same value for next year. So with the 148th selection, bit of a reach, I guess, with a lot of prospects still here, but that's okay. We select Jason Williams from the USA West, maybe out of Seattle, six foot one, 18 years of age with great potential. Low overall, probably, yeah, 49 overall grinder, but solid potential, and that's what you need late in the draft. Half star physical, beautiful. We'll now go up to the pick that we're looking for there at 192. We'll select whoever we had available at the end of the sixth round. Looking at the pins right here, we have the medium starter, not number one on the priority list. I'd probably start making my reaches and going for the low elites now. So I think the last two picks, we'll leave the low top six and the medium starter. I'll start with going for Justin Appleby from Liga, low elite defenseman. 
uh, left D. They're both left D. He is 46 overall, low elite offensive defenseman. Wow. And now just a few picks ahead to 195. We'll take the other defenseman that we wanted, and then we will call it a day. Jackson Wilson, once again, USA West. A heavy USA draft, I would say. He is 48 overall, low elite offensive defenseman, and thus concludes the draft. Oh, what? Pick 220. I totally forgot. Okay, so that's a surprise. Pick 220. That's my bad. I, I didn't uh, retain that information. We just went to the draft screen. So we can take a low top six, but yeah, that's true. Popov's brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nikolai Popov, 17 years of age, six foot four. Vitaly Popov's brother. There we go. Keep it all in the family. Uh, low top six, 50 overall, two way forward. So keep that in mind. We almost forgot about him. Maybe he'll be a pillar of the franchise in the future. Thus concludes the draft now, ladies and gentlemen. Burroughs, Russell, Obergauer, Kelly, Williams, Appleby, Wilson, and Popov. Three consecutive Americans, all with a name starting with J, I think, there. So let's advance a day now. We'll start to see, we'll see if uh, Peyton Wilm is going to sign that extension that we offered him. We have uh, some contracts to, to send out for some scouts. And Peyton Wilm, easy decision to decide from my con to decide from my contract with you. I appreciate that you chose to offer me the type of money that I feel I am worth. So I decided to re-sign eight more years of Peyton Wilm to the age of 31. Let's try and see how many more rings we can get him. Maybe some Vezinas along the way as the last couple seasons have been cut short due to injury. I'm going to take care of the scouts with expiring contracts and then we'll get to our player contracts. All right, that's all taken care of. Now we can get into the contracts. I did forget to trade Jaden Schwartz's contract because we knew he wasn't going to be coming back. Part of me wanted to try and hope something would work out, but now all expiring. We only have 6.685. Jaden Schwartz, could he come back for one more year? Yeah, he could, but he's going to continue to regress. We need those lineup spots for guys who need to come up in the system. Jane Schwartz, he is the all-time franchise leader in games played and in assists. I'll look at that in a moment for all of you. Back-to-back 57-point -back season. Since he came to Seattle, has been as good as 75 points in a year. Great top six player for us in the playoffs. Point per game on the first Stanley Cup. 17 in the second and 14 in the third. He has a ring with uh, St. Louis as well, so four Stanley Cup rings. What a career for Jaden Schwartz, now 35 years of age. So it hurts probably the most of all of them because he is one of the last remaining original Kraken. But Jaden Schwartz will be released to free agency, not because of money, but just because he was probably done in terms of not having room for him two years ago. The last two years, we kept prospects down in his name. We got two more rings. He is an amazing veteran. We got to break up the Blues Brothers. Jaden Schwartz, thank you for your service. That one hurts. What a legend. Well, and he's part of the, the statue, the statue in Seattle. Tarasenko, Schwartz, McKinnon, Trocek, they're all up there, man. So speaking of original Kraken, Cole Lind, another original selection for us. I'd like to keep him as depth. He's always been good for us as a 13th forward. Uh, if we have extra money, I will do it, but for $2 million, it might be tight. Hayden Fleury, another original Kraken, but can we continue to keep him as our 7th defenseman when he is good enough to be a 6th D-man on the 3rd pair? He got a couple of rings out of the three with us, not playing enough NHL ice time. He played two full seasons with us, two half seasons with us, and he's put up good numbers. Just, I feel bad keeping him down from what he could be because the defense next year, depending on growth, could be very difficult again. So here's what we're going to do with Hayden Fleury. I'm going to sign him with the expectation that he's not coming back. I'm 99% sure that we trade him before the beginning of the year. It's only if all the defensemen who are a 78 right now in the system do not grow to the 80s. If we still have Sloan and Lundberg all at 78, 77, and Tiny Morrison 78, if that is still there, well then Hayden Fleury has a spot. But if our prospects grow as they should, then he'll be bumped out. So just keep that in mind. We'll send him a contract, but I very, I very highly doubt that he'll be back. So one year, 950,000 one-way deal. We'll see if he's happy with that. Dylan Gambrell, again, another original Kraken. He has been great in his limited roles for us. Somehow putting up points in the, you know, a 30-point season as a fourth-line center. 
This last year, he had 22 points in 64 games. He has been a member of two Stanley Cup winning teams. Yeah, he wasn't there in 25-26, so he has two Stanley Cup rings as well. If he can be, keep being our fourth line center, like you know, slash 13th forward, it's between him and Lynn because Lume and um, and Popov are there. So Gambrel's another guy who's cheap enough that I will send him a contract, but I'm quite certain that he won't be here. What two million? Quite certain that he won't be here. Kovanov, we can definitely let him go. He's a good player. We signed him at a 79 overall. He did well in the AHL. Grew to an 81. Now there's just no room for him, so we'll let him go. Where are some other players we can just take care of? This is a, these are a lot of tough decisions here. Tiny Morrison, we can definitely sign him. 78 overall now at 20 years of age. We drafted him 112th overall. Fourth round pick in 2025. And he is now a 78 overall. Ready to think about making the jump to the NHL even. So we'll send him his entry level contract. There you go. Stenland we can go ahead and release him uh piper a second round pick for us in 2025 darius piper we'll go ahead and give him his entry level deal as well and then safranov a low elite defenseman who was a second round pick as well hasn't grown very well i guess but we'll give him his entry level deal and see what he can do down in uh, pacific palm springs hc the RFA's Riker Evans, I'd like to give him another contract. He was an original Kraken from the real original Kraken. Uh, has great defensive stats at 90 shot blocking, 91 stick checking. So I'll send him a deal. Heiskanen, a prospect we've had for a while who hasn't grown, I'll send him a deal. And I'll take care of the rest of these guys and I'll get back to you here in a moment. All right, so advancing a day now, I'm going to let Caden Primo walk. He wants a one-way deal of $1.2 million. Uh, we have Matt Murray as our NHL backup, hopefully who can continue to stay that. So we'll just get a different AHL starter come free agency. Sent out some contracts. I qualified Heisken. He wanted uh, a one-way deal as well. So Piper, uh, Gambrel wants more money. Flurry, yes. Phillips, yes. Cole Lind wants a free agency. Makes sense. Reese is on board as a depth player slash first line center in the AHL. Morrison, Laferriere, Evans, Rempe, Hilpert, Safranov all on board. Still a six, now we have more cap space, even 6.91. So we can afford to sign uh, Lyndon Gamble to the slightly more expensive deals that they want. And uh, then we can afford to just trade them later on. So, you know, if he's not going to take 1.8, I'll try going 1.95 for Cole Lynn. Now it's an 82 overall. And Dylan Gambrel, I'll do the same thing at 1.95. Advancing a day for them now as uh, easy decision and still Cole Lynn rejecting. I don't blame him. He's been good for us, but he's had very limited ice time. So I understand his frustrations. And uh, honestly, I can't uh, promise him much more ice time. He did not play at all in 26-27. So, you know what? If you love someone sometimes, you just got to let him go. <sighs> you just got to let him go. Cole Lynn, minus his seven games there. So 237 games and 69 points, 27 goals with the Seattle Kraken. Had that one 28 and then 27 point season. Played two full seasons for us. But it's been a little while since he's gotten more consistent time, and he deserves it. Did not play... Uh, actually, yes. What am I saying? Yeah, 2025-26. He was there for last year's Stanley Cup. And even 24-25. Okay, so Cole Lind has two Stanley Cup rings. Okay, so we can send him off. Yeah, we didn't give you a lot of regular season time, but you got two Stanley Cup rings. We love you, and we wish you all the absolute best, Cole Lind. An original draft pick from the Vancouver Canucks. He grew in our system, and he found a way into the NHL. So it's tough, but we got to let him go. we got to let him go. So that's everything taken care of for the, the uh, contracts. We can simulate to July 1st now. And here we go into free agency. So pretty much the only thing we got to do in free agency is get a minor league backup and then some you know, various other minor league players. Definitely some big names here in free agency. Quinn Hughes, Nico Hichier. Let's go just by UFAs. And overall, who else do we got out here? Ah, Temi Panarin at 35 years of age. Vinny Trocek ends up going to free agency. He wants 8.8. .8. Kapanen and Tavares, Hayton, Heidel. Brandon Carlos, an 86 overall. Manjapane, 86 overall. A lot of talent out here. Jaden Schwartz, yeah, wants 4.325 for a couple years. So first things first, we're just going to look at potential. Anyone that can sign for the AHL system. Uh, Salcedo, low elite. Let me just look at... Uh, two-way need to check 20 uh, 23 years of age lazowski 23 yeah we'll sign i'll sign a couple of these guys no one crazy but we'll get some decent talent out there and looking at goaltenders anyone with elite potential anything like that we've got medium starter at 19 years of age uh markinen 74 overall 
Uh, Yuho Markinen. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, didn't yeah, we had him in the uh, in the Columbus Blue Jackets franchise mode? Yeah, he was good. He was good for us. Yuho Markinen, get him back in here, buddy. GM Data wants it back on board. Yeah, let's go. Uh, yeah, one year league. Uh, I'm giving the max two way deal. He can be our minor league starter for next season at a 74 overall with medium starter potential. He can grow and he can play with um, Hilpert, our um, our uh, backup uh, with medium lead potential. Uh, just going in all goalies here. Just looking at 90 overall Connor Hellebuck's there after getting shamed with Colorado by us. Uko Pekalukinen, 88 overall. Allmark, Swayman, Dostal, Sorokin, Bennington. Uh, there was a low elite in Jesper Wallstedt, but there is one team interested. He's an in RFA, I, I suppose. Uh, yeah, so we just want to go for UFAs because if we sent an RFA a contract at 800k, it would just get matched right away, no problem. So I'll go ahead and find some talent here in the two-way with some potential. Then I'll sign some of the new scouts now that it's July 1st and we can start simulating towards the preseason so we can see off-season growth. By the way, we'll also give Passy Lume his contract. He's now a 79 overall, 20 years of age, low elite. He was a fifth round pick in 2026, and he is ready to move up to, at the very least, the AHL. So we'll give him his entry level deal. He signs right away, and other unsigned players. I don't think anyone else is ready to make that jump. 71 overall being uh, Burroughs guy we just drafted, so I'll probably keep the rest unsigned. All right, that is all taken care of. No new scouts to hire for this offseason, but our scouts have been quite solid, so I'm okay with moving forward with them. Start advancing a few days now, and because we're thinking about extensions even for our current players, I'll take a look at those in a few days once we see what kind of money we're dealing with here. Bobby Salcedo signing on, accepting the offer, 20 years of age with those X factors. Don't want to trade draft picks for more defensemen in our system. Hendrix Lapierre, Zachary Bolzuk, Brandon Lazowski, Yuho Markinen all on board. We need a lot of forwards in the AHL, that's for sure, but we could just sign some more unsigned um, prospects if that would be, um, if we end up needing to. So I think that's everybody. Looking at the contracts now for the extensions, not gonna send any out, but just to keep in mind that here are the expiring players moving into the next season. Keandre Miller being at the top of that list, currently making five million. We could get him for a little less than that for five years. Depends what kind of length of contract we're looking at. If we're even wanting to keep him, because we know someone on defense is moving before the start of next season. Vitaly Popov currently on his ELC. We Only one year for RFA, so it would have to be a lot longer than that. We could go long, but that would be cheap to get him at eight years, three million or whatever. Probably keep that on the back burner. Same for Chris Moss, now at an 82. Yeah, too cheap for right now to think about it right now. Same for Dawson Mercer, Alec Kozlov. So the rookies are gonna need some money. Uh, when it comes to our extension dollar, dollars available, it's just under 12 million at the moment. So we'll keep note of that. But yeah, the defense is quite tight here because we do, uh, if we're looking at all in the system, one, two, three, four, five, six right there. Flurry as seven. If nobody grows, then in our system, potential growth candidates are Morrison, Sloan, and uh, Evans, even perhaps. Even don't, you know, could have a crazy jump from the X factors of Kobasu. Who knows if that'll help him grow with those superstar abilities. On top of that, you got Lundberg. So. It's going to be tough on the defensive front. Maybe it stays the same, but it could be one, two, or even three guys pushing for NHL minutes, which will make it difficult during the preseason. All that being said, let's get some off-season training in. Everybody eat well, have fun, work hard. Do some Gary Roberts, Athlean X kind of stuff, and we'll see you in September. And like I said, I did want to show you the record book here for Jane Schwartz's records all time in our franchise's history going down to the Seattle Kraken here. So Jane Schwartz leaves the team. Most season played is tied with Tarasenko at six. Most assists all time at 253, but McKinnon is just a couple away. Most games played all time at 472, but Tarasenko is just nine away. Those will likely be beaten, but just to say at his time of leaving after those six years, had played the most games, has the three rings. He has been a huge part of our team and we will miss him. We also got to do the draft um, number randomizer. I almost got ahead of myself here. Here we are. So randomizing number between one and 100. One to 30 is low. 
31 to 69 is medium and 70 to 100 is high. Last year, the draft class, class quality was low and then generated prospect quality was medium. But this year, when grabbing my laptop, so randomizing the draft class quality between one and 100, I get 65. So that means the draft class quality will be medium this year and generated prospect quality will be 31. So just barely medium as well, almost low, but medium, medium, just like a class classic average year, medium uh, class quality, and medium prospect quality. All right, medium, medium with 65 and 31 being our randomized numbers of the year. And now we can simulate through the summer and get to the preseason. Vesa Heiskin being tendered an offer sheet, of course, from the Carolina Hurricanes. You know what? Is it for one year? Yeah, we have the money. I'm going to go ahead and match it. Vesa Heiskinen, he hasn't really found it just yet, but one more year to try at 23 i think we could do it he spent now look at this one two three four five full seasons in the ahl last year being his best 38 goals and 73 points maybe this is the off season where he finally gets some growth and pushes for nhl minutes i'm going to sign him we have the money for one season i don't mind he was a first round pick of the capitals in 2022 we traded for him he was on their block and things haven't worked out, but Carolina, take that. We're going to match your offer. Excited to stay with the team. You, I'm glad you are, Vesa. We'll give you one last chance to try and get some growth in there. Now in September, it's time to just check out. I want to see where Trocek and Schwartz ended up going. So Vinny Trocek signed with the Columbus Blue Jackets. He went down to an 85 overall, and his potential dropped to media, to exact top nine. Signed for, oh, boy, three years at 9.115. Oof. That's going to hurt the Blue Jackets. Oh, goodness. He's a great player, but that's a tough contract on a, on a player who's going downhill now with the potential in the overall 34 years of age. That is some big money, though. Good for Vinny Trocek and his agents, but that's going to be tough for the Blue Jackets. Uh, looking at Jaden Schwartz now, see what kind of money he got and the duration of his deal. Signing with the Blackhawks. He went down to an 84 overall, maintained his exact top six potential, third line scoring forward, and he signed for two years at 4.46, a more reasonable and digestible contract, I would say. So good luck on the Blackhawks. We'll be seeing you in the Western Conference for sure. Looking forward to our matchup with them. But now that that's all taken care of, let's go and look at our lines. I'm just going to quickly edit them to make them how I probably think they'll look for the beginning of the preseason, and then we can get an idea of what kind of growth we had. All right, so I'm not super impressed with the growth over the offseason here. The first line stays the same, Tuck, McKinnon, Marco. Second line, Rosean, Beniers, Tarasenko, because of that plus five that Rosean gives it. But 80 overall, no growth from him. Third line, Moss growing to an 83, that's good. Popov, 83, but then Dawson Mercer dropping from an 82 to an 81, that's very curious. Third line, uh, fourth line, Lume grows up to an 81 overall. That's great. Gambrel at 81. Maybe he'll just stay center, though, because he has 77 face-offs and Lume has 63. And Asher Maloney growing to an 81. He's finally ready to crack the NHL, I believe, at the age of 22. Defensively, Chikrin, Bear, Miller, Pulak, and Kozlov, Yerchek. Everyone at the exact same overalls. No growth from medium elite Kozlov. A uh, medium top four Kozlov, excuse me. No growth from medium elite year check. Disappointing there, despite the pluses on the chemistry. Peyton Wilm remains at an 88 overall, and Matt Murray drops from an 82 to an 81. In the scratches here, Riker Evans growing from a 79 to an 81, listed as a top six defenseman and low elite potential. Is he our seventh defenseman instead of Hayden Fleury? Do both of them need to move because they need NHL time? Does one of them even get NHL time on our team? That's a difficult one. Uh, Jamison Reese also growing to an 80 overall with 82 face-offs, so maybe he gets the fourth line center position. All things that we can keep note of. Uh, look in the AHL now, not a lot of competition because Heiskanen stays at a 79, Bergenheim stays at a 78, and no one else really getting above 77, 78, 79, same as always. Defensively, Sloan up from a 78 to a 79, Kobasu from a 77 to a 79, Morrison from a 78 to a 79, not a ton of growth, one or two overalls each, Lundberg 76 to 77. 
So they'll all stay in the AHL, I believe, but Kobusu, Morrison, and Sloan all ready to make that jump very soon. They're all listed as depth defensemen, except for Vince Sloan, who is medium top six as an offensive defenseman. So maybe we should be trying to get him in the lineup. Not sure what we should do there. We'll see what the preseason has to offer. Goaltending Markman, 76, backed up by Hilpert. Starter potential, 68 overall, but there's also Bladder, medium elite, so I'll probably play him instead. Matthew Rempe as the healthy scratch there. So not a lot of growth, but does that mean that we keep them in the minors or does it mean we give them opportunities in the NHL? Do we like the top six like this? We still have like six million. So later in the year, do we use picks and prospects or even right now picks and prospects to get a better second line wing if Moss or Mercer or Maloney is not going to slot in there right now or even Rosean? That's what we got to consider. Are we okay with these being the lines? Can these lines be sustainable? That's the key word. Are they sustainable? Because if Tarasenko is going to be retiring soon or maybe transitioning to a lower role this season, our prospects need to be ready to make that jump. And we did not really see that over the off season. Does overall always correlate to performance? No, not at all. But just something to keep in mind. Now, as we end off, the perfect thing to do in uh, in relation to what I just said would be to check out the trade blocks around the league. So I will end here. I'll send out the scouts, and then we'll check. Uh, we'll go through the preseason next episode. So here's the trade value that we are dealing with on our team. We have lots of good value. Year check. Do we cut ties with him if he's not going to grow? I don't know. That's a tough one. Uh, draft picks. We have our first two seconds, a third, two fourths a sixth and three sevenths in next year's draft, just to keep that noted. Looking at players matching the uh, on the on teams blocks right now, sorting by overall. Schmaltz, Domi, Rust, Fogel on the Ducks. Coyotes have Clayton Keller. Sorry, I should look at the years left uh, as well here. So one year left for Domi, Rust, and Fogel. Coyotes have uh, Clayton Keller, left winger. He could be a second line guy for us. He has one year's left, one year left, and doesn't fit the scheme. Maybe we could try scouting him though, making 7.325. Raquel Shillington and uh, Montour. The Bruins have Rasmus Anderson, Will uh, Will Butcher, Manson, Mayfield, uh, Graves, Stevenson over on Buffalo. Good old Chandler Stevenson, Reinhardt, Monahan, Zubi, Palat, former Kraken, Yarn Crow, Armia, all in the Flames. Not all of them with one year left, though. That's why I can't take on guys with a lot of term, really. Uh, here are the prospects, some prospects from the Hurricanes. Blackhawks, nobody. Avalanche, Ludwig, defenseman. Blue Jackets, Trocek already on the block. Lovely. Alex Texier on an expiring contract. Always some, uh, someone who simulates quite well. Maybe even fits our second line uh, in past years. He doesn't simulate super well on the Blue Jackets, but last year in NHL 21, I remember him being good. Uh, Dallas, nobody. Detroit, some prospects. Edmonton, prospects. Florida Panthers, prospects. LA Kings, Heidel, Bushnevich, Zaka, Konechny, Velarde, Jenner, Yoki Haru, and Miller. All on the block, many of them with one year left, especially Pavel Zaka. 85 overall on an expiring contract. Plays left wing, could fit our top six. That could be a player that we look into if we want someone in the, on that second line left wing. Doesn't seem to simulate super crazy well, but maybe with the right players, I don't know, 85 overall nonetheless. Uh, Minnesota Wild, nobody. Le Canadien Montreal, uh, just prospects. Nashville Predators, prospects. New Jersey Devils, prospects. A lot of prospects out here. Islanders, Rudolph Balsers, Alex Kerfoot, and then some more prospects after that. Uh, Balsers is a sniper. Yes, he is. Four-star shooting. Doesn't seem to fit the lines. Maybe we could scout him? I don't know. 83 overall, though, kind of seems like a lateral move for the guys that we already have in our system. I'm thinking 85 plus if we were to get someone. More prospects on these teams as we go down the list. Penguins, yes. San Jose Sharks, widely former guy in our system. Kuznetsov at an 80 overall. Ton of trade value. Same with Kadri over on the Blues. Tampa Bay, Toronto, Vancouver. Just a lot of prospects out there. Teams with like multiple prospects. And Chuskin, uh, Samurukov, McCabe, Coughlin, Bluger, all down the list there on Vegas. Washington, Rasmus Ristolainen, and Uyghur, really a lot of guys with term. Winnipeg Jets, one year left on Pierre-Luc Dubois. That's interesting. 85 overall. Centerman, though, that's the thing. Uh, winger, though, in Victor Olofsson is interesting. Expiring deal for him as a sniper. Four and a half star shooting. 
Uh, how does he simulate? Ooh, simulates quite well, usually. So we get him scouted. Uh, fits the forward line too. Three out of four bars accuracy. Maybe Victor Olofsson is the guy. That's an interesting right there. Interesting one. Making 6.6. .6, then maybe the Jets want to clear up some cap space. We could give them a little bit back. Yeah, be, that would be an interesting one. So, but like I said, that's only if we're making a top six move. First, we got to probably see the preseason. And I want to hear your thoughts. If this player does this, he stays. If this player does not do that, he goes. Who needs to get the most ice time? Who needs to get top six minutes in the preseason so we can see what's happening? And we'll go from there. And what's up with the defense? Do we stay like this? What's up with Evans and or Flurry? our prospects? Do we give them a chance to make the lineup? And if they do, who moves out? Keandre Miller is the player on the expiring deal, but I feel like Ryan Pulak is probably the one who's most odd man out he's a great defenseman but 32 years of age two more uh, three more years including this one at 6.15 maybe he's the one who moves out if we're depending on what direction we're going in because if chicken can be offensive like he was in the playoffs then i don't know we don't need the points from pulak but all things to keep in mind when you're formulating your thoughts in the comments so ladies and gentlemen we'll close off the off season with that three peat stanley cup champions the back to back to back is trying to go for four now in this 2027-28 season. It's not going to be easy, but I look forward to reading all your thoughts down in the YouTube comments or over on the Discord server, link in the description. I appreciate your patience between episodes with the trade deadline, a lot of uh, analysis videos going on, as well as the redraft of the 2016 defenseman, which took about uh, an entire week to write, record, and edit full week. So I hope that you'll be able to enjoy that. Check it out. Give it a listen. Let me know your thoughts on that uh, little redraft series I've been doing as well. Leave a like if you enjoyed the offseason and the drafts are excited for this fourth potential Stanley Cup run and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already as we'll be made aware of all those videos that I just spoke about earlier as well as this NHL 22 series so ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for taking the time to watch and listen and I look forward to seeing you again in the next one where we'll begin the run for four in a row and get to the 2027-28 preseason and first half of the regular season